Very quickly from Jeremiah chapter 23 again, verses 28 and 29. The prophet that hath a dream, let him, let him tell, let him tell a dream. Let him tell a dream. Like that filthy, disgusting, heretic, last days, 24-7 channel. You know, devil. And he that hath my word. <clears throat> the authorized version. Let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff? Someone who has a dream, let him tell his dream. To the wheat, scripture, saith the Lord, is not my word like, a like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please read along with me, word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures we will be going over today. Read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Okay? Read along with me, because my mouth goes quicker than my brain, sometimes, <laughs> more often than not. Please, read along with me today. We have a very, very fascinating thing that we're going to be looking at. And also, this video is a collaborated effort. Uh, your servant is not the only one that has contributed to this. Of course, the Lord always. But um, there, is a, there is another dear, sweet, young brother... If ever we could have had a son. But there is another dear sweet brother who um, had uh, quite a do, quite a much to, to do with this as well. He's the one who asked the question anyway. <laughs> but um, this video is a collaborated effort. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. We are going to be looking at specifically today <clears throat> the seven spirits of God as found in the book of Revelation. Now, Trinitarians love this uh, topic because they think that it proves their stupid, satanic, <laughs> blasphemous, wicked, heretical, chafing trinity. Nonsense. Nonsense. And that's where this will go. Uh, but before we go to the book of Revelation, we are going to be in primarily in the book of Revelation today. But before we do that, um, Isaiah. Go to Isaiah. You know, the, the structure of this, the structure of this was, um, was um, challenging, but praise the Lord, he gave it. And of course, you know who I'm addressing when I say that. And there was a little stuff that I that I was looking at, um, that, it's like, whoa, where does this go? <laughs> go to Isaiah chapter 43 to start. We're going to start out with the reminder, okay? God is not three persons that make one God. That is illogical, that is nonsensical, and the scripture doesn't equate God in three persons. It's insanity. It is a little crazy. Okay? There is only one God who is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. That Godhead is spirit, the Holy Ghost. Soul, God the Father, body, the Word made flesh. There is only one God. And no matter how you Trinitarians like to slice and dice, wheel and deal, use your philosophy in vain deceit, at the end of the day, Trinitarian, one plus one plus one 
equals three, not one. Okay? I'm so sorry, not really, but I'm so sorry. Okay, but Isaiah 43, verses 10 on to verse 13. Just refresher. You... <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and have saved. I have shewed when there was no strange God, little G, among you. Therefore, ye are my witnesses, and they ain't the Jehovah's Witnesses. God forbid, saith the Lord, that I am God. Excuse me. Yea, before the day was, I am he. And our Lord said, unless ye believe I am he, Ye shall die in your sins. Jesus said, Unless you believe, I am he. Okay? Yea, before the day was, I am he. Jesus was saying, Unless you believe, I'm the Father. Oh, yeah, you're hearing me right. Because it's not me. That's what he says. That what, that's what the scripture says. Unless you believe I am he, you shall die in your sins. Jesus is saying, look, I'm the father. You don't believe I'm the father, you're going to die in your sins. Yeah, buddy. See, you Trinitarians, you don't have the right God. There's some of you who are confused about that. There's many resources available to where you can become aware of the truth of who God is. But if you're a Trinitarian, you do not have the right God. Period. Anyway. Yea, before the day was, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work. And who will let mean hinder it? Okay? Isaiah 44, verses 6 on to verse 8. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. And his Redeemer... Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Thank you. God manifests in the flesh. Thank you. One God. He's the fullness of the Godhead, uh, Godhead bodily. <laughs> okay. I am the first and I am the last. And beside me, there is no God. Thank you for, thank you. And who as I shall call and shall declare it and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people, and the things that are coming and shall come, let them shew unto them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have I not told thee from that time, and have I not declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. <laughs> it's like, what, 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 you think, what, I'm three persons? What, is, uh, what, wait, you think God's schizophrenic? <laughs> Some of you actually do. <laughs> Some of you actually do. And Isaiah 45, verses 5 and 6. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Oh, all you atheists and lots of people who think you know God, but yet you believe in that satanic trinity nonsense. <clears throat> um, just to, to reassure you, I am implying that. If you don't have the right God, if you don't have the right God, what does that mean? I'll let you figure that out. Ignorance is one thing. Ignorance is one thing. Okay, that's different. But when you're starting to be willful and want to shoot people over the Trinity, 
You don't have the right God, son. Careful. That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is none else. No, no God beside the Lord. There, there's not three persons. That, that's crazy. Okay? If you're a Trinitarian, you do not have the right God. Your God. Trinitarian, your God is Satan. Period. And there will be a video in the description box where we can prove that to you. Okay? So, now, the witness thing it was. I was wondering, uh, I'm talking to this brother, uh, the witness thing. Uh, I was like, well, where's, where do you want me to put that? <laughs> so, anyway, Revelation chapter 1. Let's begin this. Revelation chapter 1. We are going to take notice of three sevens. Now, seven is the complete perfect number. That's God's number. Three and three is six. Six is the number of man. Seven, of course, the day of rest. You can figure that out. But we are going to look in reference to these three things. Seven churches. Seven stars, but we are going to be concentrating on seven spirits. Now, this is significant because here, unless you want to listen to Mr. Smiley, Mr. David Daniels, every time in Scripture, when you come across a capital S spirit, it is a reference onto the Lord himself. There are other times in Scripture where you will come across a lowercase s where that is the Lord himself imparting something, like a, the spirit of wisdom, okay, and that kind of stuff. That's just an example, okay? But a capital S spirit, unless it's at the beginning of the verse, okay? You check every verse in Scripture, every single solitary verse in Scripture begins with a capital letter. Okay, come on, guys. Come on, don't get... I know a lot of the devils and you guys, uh, enemies of our Lord can really be petty, but come on, okay? But every time you see a capital S, spirit in Scripture, every single time, it is a reference unto the Lord, ourself, uh, Lord himself, okay? All right? Every single time. That is significant. And then there are those out there who will say, well, seven spirits of God. I know that nitwit twit, um, Eric, uh, lying fart. He believes like there's nine holy ghosts. <laughs> uh, Peter Ruckman actually did, I believe it was a video or sermon, uh, the nine spirits of God. Uh, I, I believe he did a video, or not video, a uh, sermon on that, okay? But the seven spirits of God, capital S. So what, does that mean there's seven gods? <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's go, let's do this. Revelation chapter 1, we're going to begin from verses 1 on to verse 6. Uh, check this out. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to shew unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Verse 4. Here we go. Now pay attention. I, uh, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia. Now, within the description box, our beloved brother Alexander Hartley, Alexander B. Hartley, has done, he's already done the work on this. He did a two-part, or yeah, two-part video where he 
methodically and analytically, bless his heart, not in the southern way, goes through the scriptures and looks at every appearance of the word church and churches. That work has already been done. That will be in the description box for you. And if I forget, somebody will put it in the comment section. But I, I won't forget that. Okay. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Seven churches. Churches are not buildings. Churches are the people. The body. Okay, like I said. Our beloved brother Alexander B. Hartley already did the work on that. That will be in the description box for you. Check that out yourself, okay? They are not buildings. Today, God does not dwell in temples made with hands, okay? That's one of the biggest lies that Christianity, uh, Catholicism, which is Christianity, um, tells you that you got to go to a church building. It's, it's nonsense. Church, churches, that's us, the body. Okay, but more on that in a bit. Okay? John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you in peace from him which is, and which was, and which is to come. And from the seven capital S spirits which are before his throne. Seven capital S spirits. Hold on. Stop. Brad, you said that every time you see a capital S spirit, that's a reference on the Lord himself. That is correct. Don't believe me. Go ahead. Do the work yourself. Please, do the work yourself. See. See for yourself. See for yourself. Okay? Do it. So it's like, okay. All right, seven capital S spirits. So what? Are there seven gods now? Seven spirits? Like that idiot Eric Lionfart likes to tell you there are nine uh, holy ghosts or some nonsense, whatever he said. Uh, no, no, no. Sometimes, brethren, people, the answer tends to be a little bit more simple then we want to give it credit for. For example, the thing about the Trinity, that uh, Bob Barron guy, not that crazy idiot from England, that Bob Barron Jesuit guy, he openly says, the Trinity was, made, it was created to confuse you, and <laughs> he's right about that. And God is not the author of confusion, okay? The Trinity is confusion. Who God is is simple. We're made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. If we're made in the image of God, that must mean what? That God also has what? A spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Now, getting a little ahead of ourselves, but don't want to rack your brains on this because this is a little bit more simple. And I'm going to give you an example of what this is talking about. The seven spirits. So there are seven gods? No. I have the capital S Spirit, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit. I have the capital S Spirit dwelling within me. Okay? My sweet brother from Croatia, he has the capital S Spirit dwelling within him. Brother Alexander B. Hartley has the capital S Spirit in him. Brother Jeff has the capital S spirit in him. My brother, our brother from Ohio, our brother from Georgia, our brother from New Jersey, our sister from England, okay? Our brother from Norway or Sweden. I, I get that one uh, confused sometimes, brother, okay? You see? That's eight. You see? You see? Okay? It's not that there are seven gods. God forbid. Every believer has the Father, the capital S Spirit, dwelling in them. Okay? Okay? Now, how does that work with him, the Father being in us and being in heaven? I don't know. <laughs> but I know what it isn't. 
It isn't a nonsensical three-person trinity because the, the scripture doesn't teach that. Okay? But that's the simplistic answer to this. Okay? Every believer today has the Father dwelling within them. So does that mean that there are seven gods or you're all Christ? No, no. But God dwells within every single believer. Okay? Like I said, the answer to this seven spirit thing is a little bit more simplistic. But like I said, let's keep going, okay? And it says here, the seven churches. Okay? Also, too, you got to remember the timing when this was actually written. Okay? You got to keep that in mind as well. And the seven churches and the churches are bodies of believers. It was not a reference onto a building. Our, bro our beloved brother Alexander B. Hartley proves that in his videos. Extraordinary videos. Okay? But they are collective bodies of believers. So, in reference... Seven bodies, seven churches, okay? And God is there in the midst, of course, okay? See how this works? Let's continue. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness <laughs> and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Witness. We already looked in Isaiah about the witness. But let's check this out. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. Okay? 1 John chapter 5. Not 3, Brad. 1 John chapter 5, verses 9 on to verse 11. If we receive, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. There is no other God but one. He said himself in Isaiah, that I, I don't know of any. What, 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 who are you talking about? Okay? All right? All right. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar because he believeth not the record. The record. Like on a turntable? Ah, shut up. <laughs> no. The record, the scripture that God gave of his son. And this is the record. That God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Witness. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, 1 John 2, 20, verse 20. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Today, when you are saved, the Lord saves you, he seals you until the day of redemption. And that seal is the Lord himself. Every single genuinely saved believer has the capital S, God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, you know, the Lord is that spirit. This isn't rocket science, people. See, the Trinitarian will come into this and just throw a dirty bomb and just make you all confused so blood comes out your nose. No, you have... That one God dwelling within you. Well, how is he in heaven and in you? I don't know. I don't know. But you know what? God is greater than us. And we have him in us. But he's also in heaven. Okay? See, the Trinity tries to make God into this manageable, pliable thing. While yet blowing everyone's brains out. Um, who God is is a little bit more simpler than what the Trinitarian wants you to believe. Okay, but ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Verse 27 in uh, chapter 2 of 1 John. But the anointing which ye, have, which ye have received of him abideth in you. And what is this anointing? 
Okay? And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. So what is this anointing then? Okay? Look at uh, 1 John 3, verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. And that doesn't mean sinless perfection like so many of these idiots want you to believe. This is talking about what? The indwelling capitalist spirit that lives within the believer. Okay? For his seed, Abraham's seed, remaineth in him, meaning once saved, always saved. Okay? And he cannot sin. Who cannot sin? God cannot sin. God living within you, brother, sister, cannot, will not sin. God the Father, that capitalist spirit that lives within you, cannot and will not lead you, guide you into sin. He won't. We have to make the right choices, remember, okay? Remember, God isn't holding a gun to your head, forcing you to do something, okay? Remember that. We have to make the right choices. Because if it were like these stupid Calvinists say, then you're a robot, okay? It's not, it doesn't work like that, okay? You have to make the right choices. But see, God living within you will not guide you on into sin. He won't. He can't. He's God. He won't do that. He can't do that. That is what this verse is talking about. And incidentally, when you got someone who comes like Final Call 07 and his stupid uh, warning the people, that, that guy, okay, uh, this verse is not saying that a saint doesn't sin. No. The capitalist spirit that dwells within the believer, he can't sin because that's God. You see how this works, okay? Don't fall for that. And you got these guys coming around and preaching that not even sleazy believist uh, pounce and trounce these guys who talk about sinless perfection. They even they get that one right, and some of them can really do that well about uh, these guys who come around talking about sinless perfection. Don't don't, don't you know something's got to be hooey when you got the sleazy believists. <laughs> even them who are full of baloney themselves when even they are able to blow apart sinless perfection okay so just keep that in mind whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin for his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God okay okay you see how this works now go back to Revelation chapter 1 okay now also too Verse 4 in Revelation chapter 1 is significant because you see both what? Seven churches and seven spirits in the same verse. You want to know something really interesting? Very interesting. And please check me out on this. Seven spirits, seven stars, and seven churches does not appear all three in one verse at the same time. We, you just see here seven churches and seven capital S spirits in one verse. You'll also see uh, other things like that. But you will not see in one verse. <laughs> Find it. I, I couldn't, by the way, brother. Find it. You will not see seven churches, seven stars, and seven spirits appear in one verse at the same time. Okay? You won't. Now, let's pick this up at, uh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, what do I got here? What do I got here? Oh, a little thing on this church, too, by the way, okay? John to the seven churches. Now, like I said, like I said, Brother Alexander B. Hartley has already laid the groundwork for this, praise the Lord, and that'll be in the description box. But what about this thing? What is the church? Here, let's answer, the, answer this simply. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, okay? Colossians chapter 1. Church is not a building, okay? Church is not a building. Colossians 1, verses 16 on verse 18. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. 
And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body. The body. The church. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. And in all things he might, that in all things he might, the, he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay? And having made peace through the blood of his cross. I know we're reading a little bit more. By him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. So church is not a building. That's us, the body. Okay? So the seven churches are seven bodies of saints. Okay, that's what that's talking about. Okay? That's what that's talking about. Also keep in mind the when the the, the timing of when, you know, John the Apostle was still alive, okay? And that Keep that in mind about the, the seven churches because there are more, obviously, more than seven churches today, aren't there? More than seven bodies of believers today. Collective bodies, too, okay? Isn't there? So keep that in mind, okay? It doesn't make it a contradiction, okay? You, you do have to sometimes keep in mind when things were written, okay? You do. All right, now go to Ephesians chapter 4 very quickly. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. And grieve not the holy capitalist spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed, <laughs> sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay? All right? And for, uh, chapter 5, verse 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. And if you were to read in 2 Timothy chapter 2, um, he cannot deny himself. We are part of the Lord. That doesn't mean that we are little Christs. We have the capital S spirit dwelling within us. Okay? All right? Churches are not buildings, people. They're not. They're not. There is one part, uh, one place in Scripture where it can be a reference onto a building, but the context of that, and Brother Alexander co covers this, um, is... <laughs> pagan heathenism, <laughs> okay, with the uh, things of Diana, okay? But now go back to Revelation chapter 1. Let's pick up for, at verse 9. We're skipping verses 7 and 8, okay? I, John, who also, and uh, let me see, where, 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 uh, beg, beg your pardon, okay, verse 11. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the capital S spirit on the Lord's day, that would be Sunday, and heard behind me a great voice as a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega. What does that mean? You never have to have any doubt about what that means. The first and the last. Elsewhere it says the beginning and the end. First and the last. Okay? That's what alpha, alpha, first, omega, last. Beginning, end. Okay? You never be confused about that. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia and Ephesus and unto Smyrna and unto Pergamos and unto Thyatira, Thy Thyatira and unto Sardis and unto Philadelphia and unto Laodicea. Now, again, these are not buildings. These churches are bodies of believers, not buildings. So, the Lord was saying, write a book and send it on to the seven churches, okay? Buildings, seven churches, okay? Uh, getting, I'm, we're not going to mention about the menorah yet, brother, so let's keep reading, okay? 
And now, verse 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. We're going to wait until we get to lamps, okay? We're going to wait until we get to the lamps, okay? So remember the candlestick, hinge that. We're, we'll, we'll get to that, brother, but not yet. Not yet. We're going to go off of the stuff that the Lord showed you, okay? So don't get ahead of us. And in the midst of the candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with the garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Okay? Okay, the menorah. It's got the three there and then the one in the middle. Okay, the menorah, the Jewish candlestick, the lamps. Okay? Okay? Now, verse 14. Okay? His head, now, let's look at this verse very carefully. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. How many of you have heard, and they will use this as a reference point, that Jesus Christ had an afro? Hmm? A lot of these wicked black Hebrew Israelites will come to this and say, Jesus had an afro. He may well have had, I don't think so, uh, but he may well have had. But look at the verse. Look at the verse carefully, okay? Look at it carefully, all right? His head and his hairs were white like wool. Were white like wool wool, as white as snow. The reference, and I've encountered this on several occasions, the reference there is that the hair color of the Lord is going to be white. He has, right here, I know in Song of Solomon, uh, black as a raven, I know that. I know that. Here, here, and remember, this is the resurrected Christ, okay? Here, all it is saying, dear friend, is that the Lord has white hair. Look, look, look. Look at the verse. All it is telling you is that he has white hair. It is not, this verse specifically is not saying that the Lord has an afro. Very nice, subtle try. But when you look at the verse, my dear friend, all it is telling you is that the Lord has white hair. That's it. Okay? This verse specifically is not saying that Jesus Christ has an afro. Get over it. And his... Uh, his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. His feet and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in the furnace, and his voice as the voice, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Again, Look at that verse. And his feet like unto fine brass. Have you ever seen, truly seen, fine brass? Brass. My dear friends, my dear hermetic friends, Jesus Christ is not black. Jesus Christ is not Caucasian. Jesus Christ is a Hebrew. And a Hamite or a Japhethite cannot be a Hebrew. It's impossible. It's impossible. It is absolutely categorically impossible 
for a Hamite or a Japhethite to be a Hebrew. Even some of Shem, it is impossible for them. Okay? You got to remember because the Hebraic line was taken out of Shem. So the Hebraic line is rooted in Shem, out of Shem. Anyway, it is impossible for a Hamite or a Japhethite to be a Hebrew. Get over yourself. Okay? Jesus Christ was not Caucasian, nor was he black. If you've ever seen fine brass, as I have, that ain't white. That ain't black. Okay? Get over yourself. And, and he had in his right hand seven stars. What are these seven stars? Now, this uh, seven stars right here is the first appearance in Revelation. But hold on. Let's, let's finish the verse. And he had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth went a sharp to edged sword, which you read along, read about further in the book of Revelation, the sharp to edged sword, and also Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Thank you, brother. This, that, it's referring on to the scripture. The sharp to edged sword, that's what the, he's, that scripture is referring to itself right here. Okay? And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Amos chapter 5. Amos chapter 5. Amos chapter 5. Seven stars, okay? There is another appearance of seven stars in Scripture, in the book of Amos. In the book of Amos. If my fingers would get there... <laughs> Uh, just uh, this this uh, scriptures is just about perfectly worn in. <laughs> oh come on, get to Amos. Okay, Amos chapter five, verses six, on to verse eight. Seek the Lord, and ye shall live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph and devour it, and there be none to quench it in Bethel. Ye who turn judgment to wormwood, oh, like all of Christianity, and leave off righteousness in the earth. Seek him, pay attention, that maketh the seven stars, there's the, there's the reference, and Orion, and turneth the shadow of death into the morning, and maketh the day dark with night, that calleth for the waters upon, of the sea, and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. Hmm. Hmm. Talk about the supremacy of God, huh? That strengthened, strengtheneth the spoiled against the strong, so that the spoiled shall come against the fortress. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor him that speak uprightly. Yes, ye who turn judgment into wormwood and leave off righteousness in the earth. Yeah, they hate him that rebuketh in the gate. And they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. Just like every Christian out there usually don't like us saints. Usually. Usually. Okay? Now, let's go back to Revelation chapter 1, <clears throat> verse 16 again. And he had in his right hand seven stars. Right hand, the seven stars. What are these seven stars? Don't worry, it, Scripture is going to explain itself. But let's keep reading. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, reference onto the word, not an actual sword, okay? This the sword of the Spirit, yes, okay? And his countenance, his bodily form, was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. There are Christians out there who think that they're going to get up to that judgment and say, Hey, Jesus, come on, bro. You, you, you don't know who God is. You, you don't have the fear of God in you. You don't. You don't. 
perfect love casts out fear. That's talking about the fear of man, nitwit. Okay. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. He is Alpha and Omega. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the, now pay attention, seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. I'm talking about the menorah, okay? The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. That explains it right there. Okay. Now I have heard people say that the angels of the seven churches was a reference onto the pastor of the actual... I don't buy that for one second. I don't buy that for one second. No, no. The angel of the Lord... Within these seven bodies being talked about, and they're given in detail in uh, chapters 2 and 3, okay? The angel of the Lord. The Lord is present within the believer. And when we are gathered together, okay, I don't think this has anything to do with an individual pastor, that did, and that see, and if that is the case, which I don't believe it is, and I, I think um, I think His Holiness even made a reference that that is a thing onto uh, the pastor. No, no, I don't, I don't think so. But regardless of that, the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand are the seven golden and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Okay, each and every one of us believers have the Spirit of God within us, the capital S Spirit. Also, can we be referred to as the angel of the Lord? Okay, all right. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. We want verses 4 on to verse 16. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 on to verse 16. There is one body and one capital S spirit. But Brad, but Brad, it says seven capital S spirits. Yes, there is only one God. And that one God lives in me, lives in you, brother, lives in you, sister. But yet it's one God. Okay? You see how this works? Let's go, come on. There is one body and one capital S spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord. One faith. One baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given Grace, according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascendeth up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Hmm. God is a lot bigger than even some of us saints can rightly fathom. And think about this with that statement just gone out the, in the air. 
if we could totally, totally comprehend God, would he be worth serving? See, God wants us to know who he is. That's, I mean, if he didn't, we wouldn't have the scriptures and you'd have to depend on these idiots who have followed their own, their own spirit and have seen nothing, okay? God wants us to know who he is. God is not a trinity, okay? He gives us just what we need to know of him that we may go to him and learn of him and love him, okay? But see, we can't really ever fully comprehend who God is. We, I mean, we can. If we could, then he wouldn't be worth serving. And see, eternity we're going to spend with the Lord, and eternity won't even be enough for us. God's, God's a lot bigger. And see, when you demote God into this nonsensical three-person trinity nonsense, that's a way of man trying to manipulate something he knows nothing of. This is why you have to be totally against the Trinity and abhor it with every fiber of your being. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. And who is the perfect man? Oh, we, oh, we already looked at that. That Father, you know, that Spirit, that God, one God that lives within you, who cannot, will not sin, cannot, will not guide you into sin, the hidden man of the heart, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Let's see, Scripture answers who the perfect man is. It's Christ. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. I said it that way purposely, brother. By the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him into all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, and every part maketh increase of the body unto itself, unto the edifying of itself in love. So a church is a body, but there are many members within that body. And within that body, the Lord has distributed to whomever he wants what he wants for the perfecting of that body, for the edifying of that body. So when we look at Revelation chapter 1, verse 20, it makes a little bit more sense now. The seven stars, okay? The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the, are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. And the seven churches are given in detail in Revelation 2 and 3. Okay, and you got to remember the time when this was written. Okay, all right, you do have to keep that in mind with this. You do, okay, all right. Now, also, too, something very interesting. Churches. You know when the last time the word, any variation of church appears in Scripture? You know when the last time that appears? And Brother Alexander Hartley, he'll, you'll see. It's in Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. That's the last, and it's churches or church. The last variation of any form of the word, church or churches, appears in Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. And right here, verse 20, is the last appearance of seven churches. 
That's significant. That's significant. Very significant. Very, very significant. Now, let's look, read Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 3. On to the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. And again, the picture of the menorah. If you've seen a menorah that's got the three things with the one in the middle there, okay? But there again right there, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand. Okay? What are the seven stars? The angels of the seven churches. Okay? He holds the seven churches. He holds us in his hand. We are part of his body. We belong to him. Okay? He cannot deny himself. Okay? I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience. And how thou and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne and hast patience, and ha and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. And we're going to end it right there on that one, okay? But we looked at this specifically for the seven stars reference, okay? All right. Now. Revelation chapter 3, verse 1. And now here you're going to see also, we saw, what was it, seven churches and seven spirits uh, together. We're now going to see seven stars and seven spirits together. Okay, But like I said, you don't see all three of those in the same verse at the same time anywhere. Very interesting. Very interesting. And the thing about church, churches. The last appearance of any variation of the word, you check this out, is Revelation 3, verse 14. Why is that? We'll answer that question here in a little bit. But Revelation chapter 3, verse 1. Okay? And on to the angel of the church in Sardis, write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits, capital S, of God. Okay? himself, in the believers, in the bodies of these churches. Okay? This is not a contradiction. This has nothing to do with the Trinity. They're, they're not seven gods. There is one God who fills all things. Okay? This is actually a lot more simple than Christianity wants you to believe. And the seven stars. Okay? Seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Okay? They're, like I said, capital S, Spirit of God lives in me as he does in you, sister, brother. Okay? And in the collective body of believers, that's how that works. Okay? And you got to remember, the church was still at its infancy during this time, even though uh, the Apostle John John is uh, equated as the Apostle that lived the longest, okay? Um, it is uh, mentioned, uh, not in Scripture, but that in antiquity, that he was the only one who died of old age of the Apostles. So, But let's read, okay? And on to the angel of the church in Sardis, right? These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and art dead. Like Christianity. They have a name that they live, but they're actually dead. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 on to verse 14. This right here. This right here. This, this is it. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are diversities of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, 
but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Look at those verses. Don't look at me. Look at those verses. Look at them. Look at them. Check this out. Check this out. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and the darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the capitalist Spirit of God <laughs> moved upon the face of the waters. Mm. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And verse 6. And there are diversities of operations. But it is the same God which worketh all in all. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Fascinating. Fascinating, isn't it? But the manifestation of the capitalist spirit is given to every man to profit with all those of us who are saved, obviously. For to one is given by the capitalist spirit the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same capitalist spirit. Are these diff all these different gods? No, it's one God within the body, within the believer, giving as he wills, okay? To another faith by the same capitalist spirit. To another the gifts of healing by the same capitalist spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another discerning of lowercase s spirits, ones that are imparted. Our spirits, okay? <laughs> to another, divers kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretations, interpretation of tongues. Verse 11. You see, brother, how that, what I, we talked about yesterday. But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit, capital S, dividing to every man severally as he will. Like I told you yesterday, brother, that's tie into this. Revelation 3, 1, okay? Hold your place and do one of these things. And unto the angel of the church in Sardius write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God, but all these worketh that one and the self-same spirit, dividing... To every man severally as he will. And the seven stars, which are the bodies, okay? I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. The seven stars. Uh, they are the uh, the angels of the seven uh, of the seven churches. Yes. Yes. I believe the representation of the Lord himself within those bodies. Okay? So does that mean that, uh, what are you saying? Because they're addressing the angels there. Well, remember, God dwells in earthen temples. Okay? You got to remember that. Okay? You got to remember that. He's not rebuking himself for sin. No, God forbid. Were you, did, did you come in at the beginning of this? Okay? No. No. His body is flesh and blood. Okay? And we have the Lord dwelling within us. Not a separate person of some trinity. No, that's insane. No, okay? But let's go back now to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 12 now. For as the body is one and hath many members... And all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. All, so also is Christ. For by one capital S Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, 
whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one body. For the body is not one member, but many. you got to remember, these churches, churches, bodies, are made up of what? Just men. Just man. Mankind. They're not temples made with hands. They're us. They're us. And we are fallible. Okay? We are fallible. So when he's addressing these angels, he's addressing, I believe, his body, which encompasses all of us. I don't believe, I, I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I don't buy that the angel reference there is to a pastor. I, I don't. I don't. Because somebody could really go with that and get their head full of themselves. And, oh, imagine that. Put themselves way up here and become a uh, diatrophies. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, check this out. Revelation chapter 4. Now, before we go to Revelation, no, no, never mind. Revelation chapter 4. Now, the very last appearance of church in any variation is Revelation chapter 3. Verse 14. Why is that? Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 on verse 5. And after this, I looked, and behold, a door, the Lord, was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come, brother! That's the redemption of the purchased possession right there, boy. And I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately, now look at this. And immediately I was in the lowercase s spirit. Hmm. That's not capital S there. So there, he was in the spirit. So something that the Lord was imparting. Okay. And behold, a throne, singular throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in the sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Check this out. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voice, voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Exodus. Exodus chapter 25. Check this out. Thank you, brother. Check this out. Check this out. Very good. Very good. Exodus 25, verses 31 on to verse 40. And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold, and beaten work shall, of beaten work shall the candlestick be made. His shaft, his branches, his bowls, his knops, and his flowers shall be of the same. I think the thumbnail is going to be the menorah. Anyway. And six branches shall come out of the sides of it, three branches of the candlestick out of the one side, and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side, the three bowls made like unto almonds with a knop and a flower in one branch, and three bowls made like almonds in the other branch with a knop and a flower. So in the six branches, so in the six branches that come out of the candlestick. And in the candlestick shall be four bowls made like unto almonds, with their knops and their flowers. And there shall be a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, for the three and for the three. 
<clears throat> according to the six branches that proceed out of the candlestick. See, there are the three branches on either side and the one in the middle signifying the Lord is in control of what? The seven spirits, because they are all of him. What he gives, see, giving himself. See how this works? Very good tie-in, brother. Very good tie-in. <clears throat> their knobs and their branches shall be of the same. All it shall be one beaten work of pure gold. That's very significant. One beaten, one piece. Okay? It shall be one beaten work of pure gold. One beaten work. So, it's not like a bunch of pieces put together. It was made out of one piece. Don't, don't skip that. Don't skip that. Let's keep reading. And thou shalt make the seven lamps, and they shall light the lamps thereof, that they may give light over against it. And the tongs thereof and the snuff dishes thereof shall be of pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold shall he make it with all these vessels. And look that thou make them after their pattern, which was shewed thee in the mount. Oh, but God isn't specific, right? Numbers, chapter 8. Numbers, chapter 8. Verses 1 on to verse 4. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, and say unto him, When thou lightest the lamps, the seven lamps shall give light, light, over against the candlestick. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Speak unto Aaron and say unto him, When thou lightest the lamps, the seven lamps shall give light over against the candlestick. And Aaron did so. He lighted the lamps thereof over against the candlestick, as the Lord commanded Moses. And this work of the candlestick was a beaten gold. Unto the shaft thereof, unto the flowers thereof, was beaten work according unto the pattern which the Lord had shewed Moses, so he made the candlestick. Beaten work out of one piece. Hmm. And here's the interesting part. It's how the candlestick uh, gives light. Proverbs 20. Great tie-in, brother. Proverbs 20, verse 27. Not 19, Brad. The lowercase s, spirit of man, is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Whew. That's a good one. That was good. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that one quite a bit. <laughs> now, and also, too, I want to mention... Remember how I told you the last appearance of church in any form or variation appears in Revelation 3, verse 14? Why is that? Well, very simply, that is because the redemption of the purchased possession happens and the body of Christ, the body of Christ, which is the church, we already proved that. It's not a building. There is going to be a whole plethora of buildings after the redemption of the purchased possession, people. Okay, that's why you don't see church mentioned anymore after Revelation 3, verse 14. Why? Because in Revelation 4, 1, the body of Christ, we get out of here. Okay? All right? And again, in Revelation 3, 1, we saw what? The seven stars and the seven spirits. See that tie-in? Now, let's go to Revelation 5, Six. This is now after the redemption of the purchased possession within the time of Jacob's trouble. Now, here's the thing that you have to remember, dear friend. This is what you have to remember, okay? And we cover this in the dispensations video, okay? Listen. During the time of Jacob's trouble, 144,000 Jews are the only ones who are going to be sealed Okay, they're the only ones eternally secure during the time of Jacob's trouble. The 144,000 Jews, and they follow the Lamb whithersoever he went, okay? They, they are the only ones that are sealed. Everyone else isn't. But see, just as similarly in the Old Testament under the law, 
God the Father can dwell within a believer during the time of Jacob's trouble. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. But see, unless you're one of the 144,000, you take that mark of the beast, boy, and you're going to hell. No ifs, ands, or buts. We covered that in uh, one of the, in the last video, not the one rebuking that idiot, okay? But we, we covered that in the last video, okay? See, the Lord can dwell within a believer during the time of Jacob's trouble, but unless they're of the 144,000, unlike today, it's not permanent. And see, that again is the danger of the sleazy believist. And the people are telling you easy believe, just believe, and you're once saved, always saved, from beginning to end. They're telling you that so when we, the body of Christ, get taken out in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, that you will be deceived thinking you're still eternally secure by just believe, just believe. Very dangerous stuff. Very dangerous stuff, my friend. But there again, during the time of Jacob's trouble, absolutely, the Lord can dwell in a believer during the time of Jacob's trouble, yes. But unless you're one of those 144,000 Jews, um, you it's by faith and works. And what's their faith in? The second coming, okay? That's what it's going to, the faith in. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. It's faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble, Okay. Um, there's no eternal security for you unless you're one of the 144,000 Jews. Okay? Remember that. Remember that, Christian, when you're left behind because you fell for the filth of the sleazy believest. Okay? Remember that. Now, Revelation chapter 5, verse 1 on to verse 6. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne... Note the singular use there. A book written, a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, nor under the earth, hmm, interesting, was able to open the book, neither to look thereupon. Thereon, excuse me. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, king of the Jews, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Is it not evident that our Lord sprang from Judah? Again, Jesus Christ is a Hebrew. He's not of Japheth. He's not of Ham. Okay? He is descended from Shem. But remember, the Hebraic line was taken out of Shem to be established as the Hebraic line. Okay? Verse 6, and I beheld, and I beheld, pay attention, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as, a, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Zechariah chapter 4, 4 on verse 10. We're, we're not going to read the whole, because that also is a reference, brother, onto Moses and Elijah, as you already know. So we're not going to cover that, but we are going to cover verses, where are we? 4 on verse 10 in Zechariah. Zechariah 4, verses 4 on verse 10. So I answered and spake to the angel and that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? And the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? I said, No, my Lord. Pay attention to this. And he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my 
lowercase s, spirit, sat the Lord of hosts. One that he imparts. Okay? And that's significant too because, like I told you, after the redemption of the purchased possession, unless you're one of the 144,000, uh, you are not eternally secure. You're not. It's not by grace through faith during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? His word, people. Come on. Yes. But by my spirit, Lord KSS, sat the Lord. That's one that he's imparting. Okay? Who art thou, O great, o great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. And this does not prove that it's by grace through faith during the time of Jacob's trouble. You're fetching at straws, you wicked sleazy believest. Okay? Come on now. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me on to you. Check this out. For who hath despised the day of small things? And isn't that evident that the body of Christ, the saints, are the smallest? Yeah. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, that small remnant of Jews that are going to make it? Okay. <clears throat> for who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the whole earth. Okay. One second. Jeremiah. Check this out. Jeremiah chapter 23. Check this out. Check this out. Jeremiah chapter 23. Oh. Verse 23 and 24. I Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God far off, meaning everywhere? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth Saith the Lord. Psalm 139, verse 7 on verse 12. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Lord Kaisas, one that is imparted. Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely, the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light round about me. Ooh, good titan. Yet the darkness, darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. Oh, oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord, brother. <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> Five, uh, Revelation 5, 6 again. And I, and I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. Seven eyes. Psalm 32. One verse. Psalm 32. Verse 8. Psalm 32. Verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 on to verse 16. Find a little context there, brother. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 on to verse 16. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thence, thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on, an high, on a hill cannot be hid. 
Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And that's also pertinent for what we're talking about here because Revelation 5, verse 6, the body of Christ is not on the earth and it's faith and works. And granted, the uh, Sermon on the Mount is for the kingdom of heaven, but still about the faith and works aspect. And it's like, let, men, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Hmm? Hmm? The aspect of works there. And Luke... Luke 11, we wanted a little bit more, a little bit more on this. So Luke 11, Luke 11, verses 33 on to verse 36. Luke 11, verses 33 on to verse 36. No man, when he hath lighted a candle, putteth, putteth it under in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candle stick, that they may that they which come in may see the light. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, focused on the Lord, thy whole body also is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body also is full of darkness. Hmm. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. If the whole body, therefore, be full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light, as when the bright shining of a candle doth give thee light. Now, the light of the body is the eye. Okay, Go to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Now, you got to remember, the reason why you're alive today is because the Lord has allowed it, okay? And every living man, woman, or child, there is light in their eyes. When someone dies, that light is not there, okay? That doesn't mean that you are saved. That means that the light in your eyes was given to you by the Lord. That's what that means, okay? John chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 9. In the beginning was the capital W word. Seven times the capital W word appears in the scriptures. Every single time a capital W word appears in the scriptures, it's always a reference onto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Uh, if you don't have the scriptures, you have capital W word six times in your little Bible there. You need the right book. In the beginning was the word. Uh, they take out 1 John 5, 7. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All capital W words. And the same was in the beginning with God. And God said, we already looked at it. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Yeah, because the Lord spake everything into existence. Mankind can't do that. No matter what the sleazy believers say, the uh, name it and claim it, blab it and grab it guys, which are usually Pentecostal guys, you can't create things with your words. Only God can do that. Okay? No matter what the secret tells you, no matter what Tony Robbins tells you, it doesn't work. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. I just told you. You're alive, you have light in your eyes. When you die, that light isn't there. Have you ever seen the eyes of a dead person before? Well, it's not spirit, soul, body anymore. It's just the body. But have you ever looked in the eyes of a dead guy before? There's no light there. You can actually, you know, you can actually see that. There is no light. You know, like I've told you, you, you uh, a photograph and the people's eyes are red. Look at photographs of dead bodies. They're not there because why? The light's gone. The light that the Lord gave them. Life. Okay? And the light shineth in darkness. Ooh. And the darkness comprehended it not. 
There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for witness, to bear witness of the capital L, light. That all men through him might believe. He was not that capital L, light, but was sent to bear witness of that capital L, light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Meaning, atheist, it doesn't matter your belief on this or not. You are alive today because the Lord Jesus Christ created you and allowed you to be, be alive and be here. You're, you know, you can have the attitude, I've never vowed anything or did any allegiance to him. It matters not. He is your king. And you are going to bow to him. One way or another. I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of those crazy atheist guys who was like, I'd never bow to... You're going to bow. You will. You will. I promise. I don't promise. The scriptures promise. The scriptures promise. John 16, verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. Now, the body of Christ gets redeemed in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. But God is still present on the earth. God is not going anywhere. It's his body, the body of Christ. We are the ones that go. How anyone can rightly believe in this stupidity called the post-tribulation rapture that the body of Christ is going through the time of Jacob's trouble? It's not. It isn't. We are not. Christians are going to be going through great tribulation. Sure, but the body of Christ it is not going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble. We get called up, come up hither. But see, God is omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent. God is not the one who's leaving. We are. We are the ones that are leaving, dear friends. And the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Okay? Again, the capital S spirit is going to be sealed in those 144,000 Jews. Yes. But other than that, that the spirit that we have, the same one, will be also available to believers during the time of Jacob's trouble. Yes, it will. Yes, he will. But the difference is, there is no eternal security except for the 144,000 Jews. And see, what this seven spirits things is, is it's not that there are seven gods. No, come on, come on. It's one God dividing himself into his body and giving onto his body as he sees he want, as he wants it to be, okay? And he gives us all gifts to strengthen that body, okay? And during the time of Jacob's trouble, that same spirit, capital S spirit, who is our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Holy Ghost, okay? The Lord is that spirit. That one God is still obviously going to be available onto the believers during the time of Jacob's trouble but not on a permanent basis. The seven spirits of God uh, is talking about how God is within those, his saints. As we explained simply in the beginning. So that is going to be it for this video. 
Thank you, brother, for asking this question. I, uh, I, you know, I, I had read about that many, many times, and it's like whatever. And then I, uh, you know, asked about it and look into it. Wow, I like, I like when the Lord learns me something. <laughs> um, any questions? Leave them in the comment section. I am not the only one who can answer the questions. Okay. Um, like I said, there will be uh, links for you in the description box um, uh, for you to go over and stuff like that. And the, uh, the thing about churches from Brother Alexander Hartley as well. Thank you. Thank you, brethren. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to get this uploaded. I love you. Thank you for those of you who have prayed for us, prayed in and you know, for all the stuff. We've had, this month of December for us has been really bad. I've been sick. My wife been sick. There have been like two things, you know. I personally got that, that man-made biological weapon, I believe. And my wife got uh, this uh, horrible thing going on which she gave to me. So, Hey, the, 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 the couple that share his sickness together stay together, right? <laughs> so, but uh, looks like finally getting out of the woods. Finally. So, but anyway, you needed to know that. Thank you for watching this. If you do, I love you. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you, brother. Bye-bye. Praise the Lord.